<clears throat> it's been an honor to just put on the Laker uniform, um, even before the passing um, uh, of the great Kobe Bryant. Um, and tonight was another one of those uh, moments uh, for myself, for this organization, for all the players that, that was able to wear those uniforms that he um, that, that was inspired by him and, and his mind and his creativity. Um, <clears throat> so to go out there and, um, and and one day removed from his birthday um, and then his his day of 824 to be able to have a game on this day, um, the stars aligned. Um, I did notice the, that we were up 24 to 8 because I'm always trying to figure out what's going on throughout the course of the game. I'm always looking if we're up, if we're down, what's the team fouls and all of that nature. And when I looked up there and seen 24 to 8, I was like, okay, this is, um, uh, he's here in the building. So, um, you know, it was, a, it was a beautiful, beautiful night for our, for our franchise. Um, and it's something that, that we probably will always uh, remember, um, you know, game four of the 2020 playoffs. Um, in this moment. Hey, LeBron, just thinking about today and being mom today, what the mama mentality mean to you specifically, and how do you think part of that might have played out? Uh, just work hard. I mean, it's not much more you could say. Everyone has their own definition about it or, or, or their own mantra about it. But you don't get you don't you don't see any benefits if you don't work. And uh, I've always been like that. Um, and to be able to continue his legacy is something that that hits home for me, and it's easy for me because I put in the work. And uh, and if you want to see results, you gotta you gotta you gotta work at it. And it's not about the wins or the losses, and and, and you know all of that nature is just about. A lot of people want to see results, but a lot of people don't want to put in the work. And, uh, and he wasn't one of those guys, and I'm not one of those guys. So just an honor to be able to continue that legacy. What was it about the offense, not just tonight, but last night, that started to fall into place with LeBron, the entire team, and the three-point shots going down? It seems to be part of that. But what, is, what has come together on that end for you guys this quickly? We just want to get better every game. Um, you know, we're seeing things that we can do better. Um, the most important thing we've done in this series is we've taken our in-between games, uh, film sessions, our meetings, and uh, we've applied them to that next day. Um, you know, we look at film, we watch film, we know it's not much practice time, and you really can't really get on the floor too much because you're playing every other day. Um, <clears throat> so, you, you know, that, that next day is kind of the recovery day and things of that nature, but our minds are sharp and our minds are, are, are firing when we're, when we're in our film sessions, and that's been, very, that's been huge for our ball club so far. Alan, Joe Barton. I forget what it is, but your record in closeout games is way up there. Does it, does it feel good, one, to be back in the situation, closeout games, and what do you remember about what it takes to, to finish these off? Um, it's the hardest game of a series. That's what I know. Um, it's the hardest game because you know the team that you're playing with are desperate, and they're playing all you know, everything they're they going to have, you know, they're going to give you everything that they got um, because they know they can be, you know, sent home. Um, you know, so I come in with that same mindset, that same, uh, that same desperate mindset on, um, you know, I feel the same way. You know, if we don't win, then I feel like we get sent home. And that's just been always been my, my, my motive. That's always been my, 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 you know, my, my psyche, my mindset going into a closeout game. And um, I haven't always, haven't always been, uh, you know, victorious, but I, I have that mindset, and, and uh, hopefully, um, we can do just that on Wednesday. Tanya Ganguly. Um, George Hill was asked today about the situation. He said he was asked what can we do for him. Say that again. Was last one. Um, I don't have any reaction to, to George Hill's comment. Um, uh, everyone has their opinion to, you know, in reaction to what happened. Um, what I can say is that um, if you're sitting here telling me that there was no way to subdue that gentleman um, or, or detain him or to just 
before the firing of guns, um, the, you, you, you sitting here and you lying to not only me, you lying to every African American, every black person in the community. Because we see it over and over and over. There was multiple, if you watch the video, there was multiple moments where if they wanted to, they could have they could have tackled him. They could have grabbed him. You know, they that, they could have done that. And why why does it always have to get to a point where we see the guns firing? And his family is there, the kids are there. It's it's in, a, it's in broad daylight. And um and who knows? I mean, if that video is not being taken by that person across the street, do we even know if we even see that video? There's like talks about that the cops didn't even have their body cams on. That's a possibility. Um, it's just, it's just, uh, quite frankly, in our community, and us. I know people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people in America. Black men, black women, black kids, we are, we are terrified. Because you don't know. You have no idea. You have no idea how that cop that day left the house. You don't know if he woke up on the good side of the bed. You don't know if he woke, woke up on the, on the wrong side of the bed. You don't know if he had an argument at home with a significant other. You know, if it's one of his kids said something crazy to him and he left the house steaming. Or maybe he just left the house saying that today is gonna be the end for one of these black people. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. Um, it just, it hurts, it hurts. And it's this through the grace of God that he's still living. Like seven shots, close range and he's still alive, that's through the grace of God right there. And um, my prayers goes out to that family and that community. But I got nothing nice to say about those cops at all. At all. Is it, is it hard to play basketball when you're feeling, when you see something like that? And you have this fear and you know, anger and all the emotions that you're It has so many emotions today because you know today is for our organization is it's, it's, it's a big moment for our organization. You know today is Kobe Bryant Day. And we're supposed to be celebrating and rejoicing and remembering everything he's ever done, not only on the floor but off the floor, of uplifting, uplifting the game of basketball. And at the same time, I see the video today for the first time, and my emotions is all over the place. And I still have a job to do because I'm here, because I committed. And when I commit to something, I feel like I have to come through on it. That's just who I am. But it does not mean that I don't see what's going on and I won't say anything or continue to use my platform and continue to use my voice and continue to uplift all the other athletes that let them know that they can say and do what's right and not fear what other people's opinions are. Um, it's just, it's, 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 it's tough, it's, it's tough. And like, we literally, we want, we want change. As a community, we really, we really want change. And it doesn't not only just end in November, but it starts there, um, it starts there. And, um, but we could gotta continue to still keep our foot on the pedal then. Even if we get what we want, we still have to, we still need more. What are, what are we getting? Because right now, of what's going on is not, it's just not okay. And, um, but I hope I can continue to uplift my community, uplift communities all over America, uplift the black community. Um, like I said, that's part of the reason why I started more than a vote to, you know, just to get people to understand how important our voices are. And, um, luxury of you know partnering with the NAACP today trying to get younger uh, kids in there to help with the with the polls and things of that nature because of COVID and the older generation are at risk and it's just so much that we have to do it's not like it's going to happen tomorrow but being organized and having a plan 
and and um, and keeping our foot on the, uh, keeping our feet on the gas pedal is um, something that we got to do. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but my emotions is all over the place as well. It's really I like. I can't even enjoy a playoff win right now, which is <laughs> which is which is which is the sad part. All right, we're just gonna sorry, we're just gonna take a couple more, um, Kyle. Um, so, sorry, I know you're this emotional. Thing no, you guys mean it. It's all like, you you talked told us a couple weeks ago that you know you had this desire maybe to to be out there with some of the Black Lives Matter marches and things like that. Obviously, you here you have to take the behind closed doors approach to a lot of these issues. Um, how how do you kind of kind of balance maybe your desire to, to have your hands on the situation versus um, you know the need to kind of have that organized plan? Um, I don't think I'm behind closed doors. Um, because I can get up in it right now and talk to you guys about what's going on. Um, anything that my name is attached to is going to be, you know, put out. And, and, and we want to do things that, that hits home and, and do things that's grand and not something that's just one off. Um, you know, so, you know, I'm having conversations every day. You know, I got half of, you know, my brain, you know, locked in on the playoffs and the other half locked in on how the hell I can help black people become greater in America. And, um, you know, that's what it's all about. Anybody got another one? Mark Medina? Yeah, LeBron, to follow on what you're talking about with this whole situation, the yeah. importance of voting. Uh -huh. What expectations do you have and what reforms need to be implemented so that police are not accountable when they kill them? Um, I don't want to sit here and say that I know exactly what should be done, um, but I did see I did see one one thing about um, the level of time in the academy before you become a police officer. Um, I think it was like I don't know I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up, but I know it wasn't that long till you go in an academy, you know, and then becoming a police officer. Um, I mean, we got kids that's going to college three or four years, you know, I mean, six years, you know, uh, to get, uh, you know, their masters, you know, if they, or they even have to, you know, go again, um, you know, and, and they still don't even get the opportunity at the workspace or the job that they actually want to get. But we have people who are going into the academy who's becoming police officers in a year or two or whatever. You guys can look it up and then tell me. So uh, I don't want to get it wrong, but. Um, and I think, I think firearms are, are a huge issue in America. Um, I don't know how you clean that up. I'm not saying that, saying that I got all the answers, but guns are, they are a huge issue in America. Um, and not just, they're not used for just hunting, you know, that a lot of people do for sport. You know, we, right now, for black people right now, we are hunting, we think it's, you hunting us. Unfortunately, there's just too many killings going on, and not only from the cops, but we also have our own thing that we got to deal with that we got to get better at as well. The black on black crime, we got to get better at that as well. You know, but what we continue to see from from the people that's supposed to serve and protect, you know, when I when I was in elementary and they used to come, uh, you know, to the elementary and they used to talk about how they, used, you know, great give us T-shirts, you know. The, uh, if I was a crime dog, he used to come to the... Dare. <laughs> yeah, dare, the dare, yeah. He used to come give us T-shirts. We was, like, happy to see him. We, I, I even had a couple, uh, you know, cops that I, you know, growing up that I was, like, happy to see every now and then. Um, but you always had, like, in the back of your head, you was like, just got to be careful. You always got to stay on your toes because you just don't know. You just don't know. I seen a video uh, a few months ago was it a few months ago or maybe a couple months ago, a police officer rolled past and a kid was in his, in his parking lot shooting, basket, shooting basketball. Y'all seen that one? Yeah. And when, as soon as when the damn cop was about to ride by, the kid walked behind his dash truck and waited for the cop to go by.
no kid should have to feel that threatened that he has to hide at his own house. That is sad. But I know what he's going through because I was one of those kids when I lived in the projects that when I seen a cop going, we hood behind the brick wall and waited for it to roll out. And if we seen the cop lights come on, we ran. Even if we wasn't, even if we didn't do nothing wrong. Because we just, we just scared.